Good afternoon, Caleb. Good afternoon, Henry. How are you guys doing this afternoon? Uh, pretty mediocre, I guess you could say. All right, Caleb, I see that you have the mic on. It's not working, so let me jump out. I will be right back. Hi, Henry. Hey. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. I can hear you also. Yeah. All right. Hey. All right. Whew, what a crazy day this has been. <laughs> We're, yeah. Uh, Waukesha School District has closed down, so... Now students that go to the face-to-face -face schools are making up their mind if they want to stick with their online, their teachers are going to do stuff online or jump over to eAchieve. So the numbers are starting to move. <laughs> Man, what a crazy time in our lives, hey? I've yeah. Been, I've been uh, alive for a long time and I've never seen anything like this before in my life. This is crazy, but we will make it through. How are you guys doing? Uh, great. Just continuing to pray and hope for the best. Yeah. Do either of you guys have a job? Uh, not currently. Henry? Henry, you have yeah. a job? Yeah, I have a job. Where do you work? So I work at a karate school. At a where? A karate school. So I have an instructor there. And oh. yeah, they're pretty much it's mostly closed down. Oh, I'm not closing going down? in on Tuesday. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a day by day basis and whether or not it stays open. Yeah, I would I would assume that he's probably gonna have to close down. Man, I, I spent about thirty years in martial arts. <laughs> what type of karate do you take? Um, just I I don't know the type. It's just standard like American karate. It's a little bit of jujitsu as well. So but it's um ah. I don't know what it's called. Do you guys ever do any any uh, ground fighting, grappling? Yeah, we do that some. Um, so actually, it's a karate school and a jiu-jitsu school. So the guy who owns it, he's a really big into jiu-jitsu. He knows a lot about it. Um, yeah, jiu-jitsu is a jiu-jitsu is a pretty amazing thing. Um, you you know the Hoist Gracie and his family? I mean, they were jiu-jitsu yep, masters. Kind of jiu-jitsu it is. It's Gracie right. jiu-jitsu. I I uh, I worked out with Hoist Gracie. In Chicago for a while back in the back in the day when he uh, he won the first two uh, UFC fights, man, that was unbelievable. That is <laughs> the, man, the man only weighs like 170 pounds, 70 pounds wet, <laughs> but man, he can make you look like a fool because man, <laughs> he could. <laughs> I mean, he would let you. He would actually let you take any hold you want on him and he would he would actually get out it's like oh my goodness wow <laughs> what was, level of martial arts training do you have i was second degree in taekwondo and third degree in what is called kineticon which is uh is basically um ground fighting and basically jujitsu ground fighting and weaponry so uh, nice. my 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 um sensei uh kind of he he was he started off with um, karate and then he kind of broke off on his own and started doing, because uh, I think the UFC has kind of showed people that, um, you know, just standing and kicking and <laughs> blocking, not going to do it. I mean, you, you need <laughs> to be able to uh, wrap up, get somebody to the ground. So that's where he took it. And uh, he was just an amazing um, fighter. It was great. <laughs> so that give you dope. a lot of respect. How long you been in it, Henry? Um, upcoming on seven years. Split. Seven years. That's a that's a quite a commitment. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Good for you. Awesome. All right. We better do some math tonight. <laughs> Are you guys okay with last week's material? Yeah, I think so. All right. I'm gonna jump right into um, this week's material. Sequences. We have. 
this week we're going to be dealing with sequences. We're going to be dealing with, this is the, the last um, chapter um, before the AP test. Now, I am going to say something that might kick you guys in the head. I'm not so sure the AP test is going to, take, is going to be given this year. I mean, when you start thinking about how long schools are going to be out, I have heard that some schools will not be back in session the rest of the semester. Now, that is a, you know, I don't know, I don't know if that's going too far, but I can't see most schools opening before the beginning of May. And when is the AP test? It's like May 4th. I don't know. It's going to be interesting. Now, I won't stop doing work just because you don't think there's going to be a test because they will make it up sooner or later. I mean, I, they might do it in the summertime or something. So, but my, my feeling is it's not going to be May 4th. I just, I, can't, I just can't see it happening. I mean, trying to get all those types of people together at that time, not so sure it's going to happen. But I have been proved wrong many of times. So <laughs> most of the time by my wife. So, hey. Whatever. All right. So the objectives for um, this week is we're going to write the terms of a sequence. We're going to determine whether a sequence converges or diverges. And we're going to write a formula for the nth term of a sequence. This week is pretty easy. They do get harder. Let me tell you, when we start dealing with Taylor series and stuff like that, they do get a little bit more complicated. But this week is, shouldn't be too bad. Okay. What is a sequence? A sequence is a list of things, usually numbers, that are in order. So 3, 5, 7, 9. We would consider 3, 5, 7, 9 a linear, a linear sequence because it's always going up by the same term. But it is a sequence. Okay? And that's what we're going to be dealing with today. An infinite or finite. Um, when a sequence goes on forever, it's called an infinite sequence. Otherwise, it is called a finite sequence. Okay, pretty, pretty obvious, not, not real earth-shattering stuff yet. All right, to find a term in a sequence, all we do is we plug in, like if I wanted to know the first term of a sequence, I would plug in 1 for n. If I wanted to know the second term of the sequence, I'd put in 2. If I wanted to know the third sequence, and so on. So for example, oh no, <laughs> I'm trying to write on my, my um, notebook instead of my tablet. So, for example, if they give me, and to turn on the, the um, color here, let's go red. If they give me this um, sequence, a sub n is equal to 3 plus negative 1 to the nth power. Okay, and I wanted, and I said, okay, I want a sub 1. Well, this represents, when you put a 1 here, this represents the first term. If I say, what is a sub 2? That represents the second term. If I said, okay, what is a sub 10? That is the tenth term. So if I wanted to find a sub 1, which is the first term, I just put 1 in here. 3 plus negative 1 to the first power. Well, negative 1 to the first power is negative 1, so 3 plus negative 1 is 2. That is the first term of the sequence. If I want to know the second term, I put 2 in here. Negative 1 to the second power is positive 1. 3 plus 1 is 4. And then, I, then if you figured out, it's just going to keep going back and forth. It's going to be 2, 4, 2, 4, on and on and on. That's the sequence. It's kind of an interesting sequence, but that is my sequence there. So in order to find terms of a sequence, all you do is plug in 1, 2, 3, 4. So in this sequence here, my first term is negative 1, negative 2 thirds, negative 3 fifths, negative 4 sevenths, on and on and on. Okay. So when you're given a sequence, an nth term of a sequence, you should be able to find any one of the terms. Now, write out the first five terms of the sequence. Uh, that's too easy for a calculus student. So if I wanted to find the first term, put one in here, that's just negative four fifths. If I wanted to find the second term, well, negative four fifths times negative four fifths, well, that's going to be positive 16 25ths. If I wanted to find a third term, I know it's going to be negative because if I put a 3 up here, that's going to be, you know, negative times a negative times a negative is definitely going to be um, a negative. So that's going to be what? Negative 64 125ths? 
and you could just keep going on and on and on finding each term. So writing terms of a sequence, not very difficult if they give you the nth term. And this is what they consider the nth term. Now, the calculus part of this is trying to find the limit of a sequence. And we've already found limits. We found limits of lots of things. So your limit um, knowledge is going to come in very handy when we find the limits of sequences. Okay? Sequences whose terms approach a limiting value, such as a sequence, as such sequences are said to converge. Okay? So they're converging onto a number. For, yeah, I don't even know how to talk anymore. For instance, the sequence 1 over 2 to the nth power converges to 0. If you keep doing this, you get 1 over 64. You get 1 over, I don't know, I don't even want to do any math tonight, 128, uh, 1 over blah, 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 256, and so on and so forth. This is getting really, really close to um, zero. So the definition here for the limits of a sequence says let L be a real number. The limit of the sequence a sub n is L written as the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is equal to L. For each element greater than zero there exists some value m greater than zero such that and this makes no difference. Basically what they're saying is if the limit L exists, then the sequence converges onto L. If the sequence does not exist, then the sequence diverges. So if I was going to do this problem here, I've got the limit as N approaches infinity of 1 over 2N. Well, guess what? We've done problems like this. So you put infinity in here. This is what we call a small over a big, right? Small number over a very big number. That limit is zero. So we're going to be finding the limit of sequences. And since this limit is a number, we say that that limit converges to zero. So what if I gave you, let's say I gave you this function. Um, a sub n is equal to um, n squared over five okay what would the limit or yeah what would the limit of the sequence be infinity okay so what would you say your answer is infinite no you got it either converges or oh, diverge sorry diverge Right, it's a divergent um, series. It doesn't it doesn't go on to a number. So that is where we say, well, the, the sequence diverges. Okay, it doesn't it does not have a limit. Okay, so either a function converges onto a number, or we say it diverges. So if you ever get the limit gets to be infinity or negative infinity, then we say that that limit diver or that um, sequence diverges. Okay. All right. And that's basically what this is saying, is that for every bit of integer, you know, as the limit as x approaches infinity of fx equals l, then it converges, uh, then a sub n converges to l. There are different ways in which sequences can fail to have a limit. Okay. One way is that the terms of the sequence increase without bound or decrease without bound. So you're going to end up with positive infinity or negative infinity. Then you say the, the function um, diverges. Here are properties of limits of sequence. And these are the exact same um, properties when we were dealing with just regular limits of functions. You can, you can break limits apart. You can even use L'Hopital's formula for dealing with limits. So the limits of sequences are basically the same as limits of functions. So in this problem here, we have 3 plus negative 1 to the n. We already found what the terms were, 2, 4, 2, 4. 
And so it's alternating between two and four. So the limit does not exist. This function diverges. There is no limit that this thing is going to. It, it, it's not going to a value. It just keeps going from two to four to two to four, two to four. So we say that this one also diverges. So if you have a, a sequence where uh, the, the numbers just keep going back and forth, then you have to set that um, sequence diverges because it does not converge onto one value. Now, let's take a look at this one here. I've got a sub n is equal to n over 1 minus 2n, and I want to find out if this sequence converges or diverges as well. I'm going to do the limit as n approaches infinity. Well, guess what? We learned a rule a long time ago when we were finding n is going to infinity. I'm going to rewrite this as negative 2n plus 1 because we learned that if the powers are the same on top and bottom, okay, if the powers are the same on top and bottom, then the limit is just the number in front of each of the highest power. So this would be 1 over negative 2. So my so this function is going to converge onto negative 1 half. So basically the same thing that we learned when we were doing limits. So this is kind of a, a great way to review limits also when you think about it. So anytime we have a sequence and they're asking us if the function converges or diverges, we're just setting the limit or the, the nth term, the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth term. And we're just finding the, the um, limit. All right. So now, if I had a problem like this, mm -hmm. a sub n is equal to n squared over 2 to the n minus 1. Okay. Does it converge or diverge? Well, this is a type of problem where we can use L'Hopital's formula. Like I, I mean, I don't know if n squared is bigger than two to the n, but I do know after doing this class for many, many years, that an exponent always overtakes a quadratic. I mean, because this is a quadratic, isn't it? Anything to the second power is a quadratic. This is an exponent. Quadratics look like this, don't they? Exponents look like this. So an exponent will always overtake a um, quadratic. So if I was just looking at this function and I'm thinking, okay, what is my limit here? Well, I'm going to say that this is a small over a big. So I'm going to say the, the limit or the, it converges to zero. Now, let's take a look at how L'Hopital's formula can help us. Remember, L'Hopital's formula says that if I take the limit as n approaches infinity, I take the limit of the top and the limit of the bottom, right? Well, the limit of the top is just 2n. Ah, what's the limit of 2 to the nth power? Well, remember, we've got to go back to our derivatives. Isn't that just ln of 2 times 2 to the nth? So now it's like, okay, well, it doesn't really help me any, does it? Because I still don't know what the top and bottom is, so I could take L'Hopital's formula again. Well, the derivative of the top is just 2. The derivative of the bottom, well, that's way harder because this is, oh, oh, I take it back. That's not that hard because the natural log of 2 is just a number. I was thinking I'm going to have to use the, the product rule here, but natural log of 2 is just a number. Um, so really, it's just going to be uh, natural log of 2 times 2n times natural log of 2 again, isn't it? So you really have natural log of 2 squared times 2 to the n. Well, guess what? You just have 2 on the top. You've got this on the bottom. This is going to be a huge number. You start putting in some numbers here, this is going to be huge. So we do have a big over a small. I'm sorry. We have a small, small number on top over a big number on bottom. That happens to be 0. So L'Hopital's formula does help us find um, if a sequence converges or diverges. And this sequence does converge, and it converges onto zero. Oof. Okay, that's a looking so far. Any questions so far? Anything that I just went way too fast for you guys? No, it's kind of review-esque. 
It seems yeah. Like make- yeah. I agree. I agree that it is <laughs> review um, of limits. All right. The symbol n factorial. Okay. Do you guys know what this is? What is 10 factorial? Now, I don't want a number. I just want to know how would you how would you find 10 factorial? What is that equal to? I don't know. Ah, you don't know factorials? All right. Be 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6. Correct. 10 factorial oh. means 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. That is what a factorial means. N factorial, you know, you don't know what N is, right? So it's just going to be 1 times 2. I mean, you could you could go either direction. You could go N times n minus 1, times n minus 2, times n minus 3, dot, 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 dot. You don't know how many n's there are, but you could write it out that way. And this is very, very important, because when we start writing um, sequences or nth terms of factorials, and when we get into um, Taylor series, oh, the factorials, come in really handy. So that's basically what a factorial is. It just means that, you know, if it was 10 factorial, it's 10 times 9 times 8. If it was 7 factorial, it would be 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. If I asked you for this answer, without a calculator, what is my answer? And I don't want you to use a calculator on it. Now, your calculator probably wouldn't even give you an answer because the numbers 99 factorial is huge. But what would that answer be? What is 99 factorial divided by 97 factorial? Any idea? Everything. Cancel out except for 99 times 98 on top, right? That's exactly right. You could write this all out. You could go 99 times 98 times 97 times 96 times 95. But what's going to ha- really happen is you're going to end up with 99 times 98 because everything else, the 97 is going to wipe out everything, the 97 is down here. So 9,702 would be the correct answer. Yep, I agree with you. Okay, excellent. So that's just a quick review of factorials. So if you have, and and this is this is pretty important because sometimes you'll have something that'll be like two n factorial. Well, that means the factorial is just on the n; it's not on the two. And then if you have two n factorial, well, that's a whole different ball game. I mean, that's you know the two n, so you'd end up with two n and then times. 2 times n plus, or n times n plus 1, and dot, 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 all the way down. So there's a huge difference between this and this. So just just be careful of that if you see the 2. Absolute value theorem for a sequence. If you have the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n, or the absolute value of a sub n, is equal to 0, then you know that the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is also equal to zero. And so that's just a, it's one of these theorems that we'll be using. We won't be using it this week, but we will be using it um, in the future. So that's just a, a theorem that is out there. You gotta know it, not this week, it doesn't come into play, but it is a theorem that we will be using. All right. Sometimes the terms of the sequence are generated by some rule that does not explicitly identify the nth term of the sequence. In such cases, you may be required to discover a pattern in the sequence and then describe the nth term. Once the nth term has been specified, you can investigate the convergence or divergence of the sequence. So for example, if I gave you, let's say I gave you um, one over, or let's, let's just start off with one, one half, one fourth, one eighth, one sixteenth, dot 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 dot. And I wanted to, I wanted you to give me the nth term of this thing. Okay, so a sub n is equal to 
what? Okay. So what one over two to the n. What is it? One over two to the n. Two to the n. One over two to the n. Okay. Does that work? So if I put one in here, nope, it does not. Because my first term, if this is my equation, your first term would be one half. And if you put two in here, it'd be one fourth. So it'd be one over two to the n minus one. One over two to the n. Oops. Did you did you want this to be this way? <laughs> or just two n? I'm not exactly sure. I, I think it's gonna give you the same thing, isn't it? But I agree with one over two to the n minus one, because now if I put one in here, one minus one is zero, two to the zero power is one, boom, one over one is one. That is my first term, yay. If I put two in here, two minus one is one, two to the first power is two, that gives me my second term. So this is the nth term. So if I asked you what the, if the, if the nth term converges or diverges, well, we know that we could just take the limit as n approaches infinity of one over two to the n minus one, and that is gonna be a small over a big, that is gonna converge, and it's gonna converge onto zero. That was a pretty easy um, pattern. How about this one? What is my, what is my nth term here? What is the nth term of this sequence? It's awfully quiet. <laughs> okay, I think it's, wait a second, it's two to the n power over 2n minus 1, I think. Okay. Now, did you take the top and the bottom separately? I did. Yeah, and that's the way I would do these problems. I always look at the top as a sequence. So I've got 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. I'm going to find the sequence for this first. And that would be 2 to the n, because if I put 1 in here, that gives me 2. If I put 2 in there, it gives me 4. If I put 3 in there, it gives me 8. And then I look at the bottom, and it's like, oh, this looks like a, a linear function. It looks like just 2n minus 1. So now that is my nth term. So if I want to know what this function converges to, what would you say the answer is? What is the limit of a sub n? as n approaches infinity. Diverges, I agree 100%, because we could take the derivative of this thing, but remember, we take the derivative, this, this would be a L'Hopital's formula for me, I would end up with natural log of two, two to the n over two. Oh, this thing is gonna get big, this is small. So now I have a big over a small, boom, I've got a uh, diverge. If this this um, function is not going to converge, it's going to diverge. Okay, so not not too bad. I mean, it's not a... Now, when you look at the... Well, I suppose, you know, I was going to say, you've got fractions, but these fractions are getting bigger, aren't they? you got two... Uh, no, they're not. They're not getting bigger. They're getting smaller, aren't they? Four-thirds is one... So you've got two and then one point... Uh, one three something or three three five over eight. Oh, so they are getting they are getting okay, so they are getting smaller. That to me means that it should go to zero, but it obviously does not because the function diverges. Interesting. So sometimes you can't you can't just look at the sequence and say, oh, that's gonna because I mean, you know, it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. You would think that it it would diverge or it would converge onto zero, but it does not. And we just proved it, that it diverges. All right. Uh, oh, that is, that is the problem that we just did. Okay, Oops. next page. Okay, and then consider, and then they took 
and found the, the limit, and they said that the sequence diverges. Wait, we got, we got that already. All right, write an expression for the nth term of the sequence. 10, 22, 34, 46. What is the nth term of that sequence? Ah, that's pretty easy. That's a linear function. Letter B, 12n minus 2. I agree with that, because if you put 1 in there, 12 times 1 is 12, minus 2 is 10. That gives me my first term. If I put 2 in there, 12 times 2 is 24, minus 2 is 22. Boom. That is the correct um, expression or sequence there. All right. Now, a geometric sequence. A geometric sequence, now you guys should be familiar with geometric sequences. A geometric sequence is when you take and you multiply by a number to get to the next term. 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16, 16 times 2 is 32, 32 times, okay. So a geometric sequence is almost like an exponential function, right? When, when I see geometric sequence, I think about exponential functions. And if I'm going to write an exponential function, if I'm going to write an equation or an nth term for a geometric sequence, don't we just do a sub n is equal to the first term times b to the, usually we go n minus 1, but you can, it, it all depends on how you want to start this. So if I wanted to do the first term here, my first term, if I was going to write the equation for the nth term here, I would go 2 times 2 to the n minus 1 power. They did it as 2 to the nth power. Are we both correct? Well, if I put 1 in here, 2 to the first power is 2. If I put 2 in there, 2 to the second power is 4. If I put 3 in here, 2 to the third power is 8. They are correct. But I'm going to tell you I'm correct too. Because if I put 1 in here, 1 minus 1 is 0. 2 to the 0 is 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Ah, first term. If I put 2 in here, 2 minus 1 is 1. 2 to the first power is 1. Or I'm sorry, 2 to the first power is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. That's the second power. So both of these are the same. It's just I like this formula much better. First term times rate to the b minus 1 power. That is how I always um, find out my nth term for a geometric sequence. Okay. In general, we can write a geometric sequence as a, a times r, a times r squared times a times r to the third, blah, 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 blah. Ah, so they write it the exact same way. First term rate to the n minus 1 power. And the reason this is your first term is because if you put 1 in here, if you want to find your first term, 1 minus 1 is 0, r to the 0 is 1, so that gives you your first term. What is a mathematical series? So we've been just talking about sequences, okay? Now we're going to talk about a series. What is the difference between a sequence and a series? Do you guys know? What is the difference between a sequence and a series? Sequence in a series. Now, a series is just the sum of the numbers in the sequence. Okay? So that is it. A series is just the sum of the numbers of the sequence. Okay, so if I'm talking about the series, let's say I gave you uh, a sub n is equal to 2n plus 1. And I want you to find, and this is how you write it, a sub n, or a, uh, <laughs> I forgot how they do that. Um, because if I wrote down a sub 4, you would give me the fourth term. But I want, to, I want the sum. Oh, if you do s of 4. Okay. That means you want the sum of the first four terms. Okay. Of this sequence. Well, I could find the sum of the first four terms. I, first thing I need is I need the first four terms. So if I put 1 in here, that would give me 3. If I put 2 in there, it gives me 5. If I put 3 in there, that gives me 7. If I put 4 in there, it gives me 9. Well, if I want to find s of 4, that just gives me the, the sum of the first 4, which is 24. That would be the sum 
of that series. Now guess what? We're going to be finding the sum of infinite series. Oh, ho, ho, ho. the sum of an infinite series? For example, if I gave you this problem, if I said, okay, 4 times 1 half to the n minus 1 power, what is the sum of that series? No, maybe it's just to the nth power. I think it might be just to the nth power. What is the sum of that series? If I said, what is the limit? Or, no, I want the sum. So if I want the sum of that sequence, what is that? What is the sum of that? I'm sorry. I, I use, Sometimes I say sequence when I want series. What is the sum of that series? Well, let's start adding up all the terms. What is the first term? What's the first term? Two. No. No. I better put n minus 1 back in there. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm going right. to go n minus 1. <laughs> all right. First term is? Four. Second term? Two. Third term? One. Fourth term? One half. Fifth term? One quarter. Next term? One uh, eighth. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is, and it goes on and on, right? Tell me what you think. What do you think the sum is there? Okay. What do you think? Just add it up. Tell me what you think. Because the numbers are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, right? So what do you think that's going to add up to? It's approaching eight. You think it's going to be eight. All right. Now, there is a formula to find the sum of a geometric series however there is there is a stipulation here the r value the r value has to be less than one if this r value is more than one what do you think the um sum is going to be infinite right right because if this is more than one let's say i have four times two to the n minus one power well your first term is four plus your second term is going to be eight plus your next term is going to be six it's just gonna it's gonna get huge so if the r value is less than one between zero and one then there's a formula to find the sum and you said you thought it was going to be eight here so here's the formula the formula for the sum of a geometric sequence is a over one minus r huh a sub one sorry about that that's a pretty simple formula isn't it so the first term is 4, 1 minus, what was my r value here? 1 half. So this is 1 minus 1 half. So this is 4 over 1 half, which is 8. So yes, the sum of that series is 8. I don't care how many numbers you add together. This would be, next term would be 1 over 64. Next term would be 1 over 128. Next term would be... Blah, blah, blah. I don't care how many terms you add together. The sum of that series is going to be 8. So when you find a geometric sequence, or I'm sorry, you find a geometric series, super easy to find the sum of that. All right. So here, is this a geometric now, I didn't want to give you all the rest of this stuff here, but is this a geometric series? I have 1 over 2 to the n. Could I rewrite that as, is this the same thing as this? Is that the same? Okay. Is 1 half to the nth power equal to 1 over 2 to the n? Okay. So, can I, is this the same? So, if I want to know what the first term is, what is my first term? Because in order to use that formula, we need the first term, a sub 1, over 1 minus r. Well, in this problem, my first term is, well, if I put 1 in here, now it's not n minus 1 anymore, so we got to be a little bit tricky. We just put 1 in here. 
one half to the first power? Uh, my first term, my first term is one half. My R value is one half. So if I wanted to find my formula, or if I wanted to find the sum of this, one half plus one fourth plus one eighth plus one sixteenth, you know, to me, it looks like it's going to be about one. To, doesn't it seem like you've got a half plus a fourth, so now you're at three fourths plus one eighth, so it's more than three fourths. So now I'm at, oh, what is that going to be? Seven eighths plus another sixteenth, so that's going to be, uh, what, 15 sixteenths? So it looks like it's it's going to add up to it's going to add up to one. To me, it, that's what it looks like. So if I use my formula, I have one half over one minus one half. Well, that's one half over one half. One half over one half is one. So the the sum of this geometric series is just one. Okay, does that make sense? How to find the sum of a geometric series? All right, so here's the notes. This is the convergence of a geometric series. If R is greater than one, if the R value is greater than one, it diverges, okay? If R is less than one, the absolute value of one, okay? Then the series converges and the, ser and the sum is A sub one over one minus R. That's it. So if I wanted you guys to find the sum of those functions, A and B, tell me what my answers are. Determine the convergence or divergence of each. And if it converges, I want to know what it converges to. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys a little bit of time to work on A and B there. Tell me what, tell me what your answers are. A converges to three. Uh, now, if you tell me it converges to three, I am going to say I don't think so because I'm just looking at the terms here. The first term is three. The second term is three halves. The third term is uh, three fourths. So you're telling me that if I add three plus three halves plus three fourths, it's going to add up to three? Hmm. No, I'm not. So I write it, right now I have 3 plus 1.5 plus 0.75. I mean, to me, that right now I'm at 3, and that's 2.25 plus 2.25. I'm at 5.25 already. So I know it has to be more than 5.25. If I had a wild guess, I'm going to say 6. That would be my wildest guess. Usually my wild guess are pretty good. <laughs> Part B, I do agree that it diverges, and the reason it diverges is you've got one out here, you got three halves here, which is greater than one. That diverges, no question about it, diverges. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. What is my first term? Well, they already gave me my first term. Oh, that is not the, how did they, they put one in here. That is not the first term. Oh, they started at zero. Oh, tricky, tricky, tricky. Ah, all right. So they started at zero. So they're <laughs> so you you have to watch what they're doing. So they start at zero. So n is zero. So if you put zero in here, one half to the zero is one. Three to the three times one is three. So that is my first term. So my first term is three. And I just looked at what they gave me. I didn't look over here. But my first term is three. Um, so a sub one is three, r is one half. So if I wanted to find, that's gonna be three over one minus one half, which is three over one half, which is six. And to me, that makes sense because I just added up the first three terms and I came up with 5.25, so I know it's growing, but six should be my answer. Caleb, does that make sense? Okay.
And here's the work for both of those. Geometric series, R is one half, A is three. Here, R is three halves, right off the bat, doesn't work. I think we only have one last slide for today. What is the value of n equals zero to infinity of pi over e to the nth power? Okay. What's my answer here? A, B, C, or D? D is correct. Why is it correct? What is my ratio? Here's my ratio. My ratio is pi over E. Well, pi is 3.14. E is 2.71. When you divide this out, it's greater than 1. This race ratio is greater than 1. It's kind of an interesting problem. It looks really tough, but if you understand geometric sequences or series, you should be able to say, hey, our value is greater than 1. This function divergence. Woo! That is it for today. That is it for next week also, because next week is spring break. You guys have a great spring break. Try to, try to stay away from other people. <laughs> kind of weird to say, isn't it? It's like, man, our, um, our world is being tipped upside down right now. It will get, it will get back normal sooner or later. All right, you guys have a good one. <laughs> Bye.